Well, you know, every year people always look towards what elections are being held around the world. And, and of course, next year they, there may be elections in Singapore. There clearly will be elections in the US, in Burma, and so on. But for me, it's not really a matter of what happens in various elections in, in different countries. I see next year as the possible beginning of two trends that could continue into further years and might be quite uh, important for Asia. The first is I think a lot of things are happening in China that are leading it towards what might possibly be a perfect storm. And secondly, I think we're beginning to see something we never thought would have ever happen in Asia, and that's not really an Arab spring or an Asian spring, but almost an Asian winter. Uh, we're seeing the phenomenon, as we saw with the recent elections in Taiwan, with um, young people uh, demonstrating to a great extent that they did not before, and what we saw in Hong Kong, the beginnings of young people actually voicing their unhappiness with the current situation, with income inequalities, with a lot of other things, which I wonder whether it's going to uh, actually go on to other countries in Asia. About the perfect storm in China, uh, we know the Chinese economy is slowing down very rapidly. That's going to lead to some problems of adjustment and transition. We also know that probably the Chinese Communist Party is facing its greatest crisis ever. And Xi Jinping is tackling it with some of the boldest measures anyone has seen with its anti-corruption drive. But with the kind of perseverance he's going towards and the responses on the ground and the number of people being arrested, it's a very dangerous game that he's playing. So those are two other factors. Um, the issue of um, Taiwan and Hong Kong being part of China is coming very much to the fore with what has happened in the elections with the ousting of the KMT virtually from Taiwan and with the Hong Kong youth and Occupy Central. And you've got um, other issues of uh, territorial disputes uh, you've got issues of China actually wanting to have a blue water navy and beginning to challenge the US in terms of its military might. And finally, the ever simmering and probably quite deep problems between China and Japan uh, are not resolved. So that's quite a handful for a country like China uh, coming out of uh, its previous years of being a sleeping dragon and now encountering a lot of issues. So overall, I guess I see two basic trends in Asia that are largely political in origin, that have begun perhaps this year and will clearly uh, roll on next year to, to great consequences, which all of us really cannot yet imagine what it might be.